Hey, welcome back to Coin Chronicles. This is Bryce. I hope you're doing well. Today we will take a look at some coins from the years 1851 through 1860. This will include four Liberty Head large cents, a Liberty Seated half dollar, a Liberty Seated quarter dollar, two Flying Eagle cents, two Indian Head cents, and one three cent piece. We will look at each coin and important details such as mintage, inflationary value, or purchasing power of the time. Also, we will take a look at some of the history and events in the 1850s time period. First, let's take a look at the characteristics of the four Liberty Head large cents. Each Liberty Head large cent has a size of 28.5 millimeters and 10.89 grams. Their composition is 100% copper and the designer was Christian Gobrecht. The 1851 Liberty Head Large Cent has a mintage of 9,889,707 and this coin has an inflation value of 39 cents for the year 1851. The numismatic values on this coin range from $25 in good condition up to $450 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now let's take a closer look at the 1851 Liberty Head Large scent from my collection. So as we can see this coin has a bit of a sheen to it which is uh, pretty good. Um, no visible major war worn, uh, heavily worn areas, no scratching. Uh, again the back, the back has a little bit of a sheen as we can see. Uh, it looks like it's in overall pretty good condition. If I were to grade this coin, I would say it is in very fine condition. The 1852 Liberty Head Large Scent has a mintage of 5,063,094. And this coin has an inflation value of 39 cents for the year 1852. Again, the numismatic values on this coin range from $25 in good condition up to $450 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now let's take a closer look at the 1852 Liberty Head Large Scent from my collection. So as we can see this coin has a little bit of luster but at the same time it, it does have a little bit of corrosion from over the years. It looks like it has uh, some environmental damage to it. Um, Overall, though, I think I would grade this coin uh, in fine condition. The 1853 Liberty Head Large Scent has a mintage of 6,641,131. And this coin has an inflation value of 39 cents for the year 1853. Again, the numismatic values on this coin range from $25 in good condition up to $450 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now let's take a closer look at the 1853 Liberty Head Large Scent from my collection. So as we can see here, this coin has, uh, has some uh, environmental damage to it. It looks like it has been uh, through some corrosion. Um, the, the words and the lettering is, is still visible on it. Um, and I think overall I would give this coin a grade of about good to good condition. The 1854 Liberty Head Large Scent has a mintage of 4,236,156. And this coin has an inflation value of 35 cents for the year 1854. Again, the numismatic values on this coin range from $25 in good condition up to $450 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now let's take a closer look at the 1854 Liberty Head large scent from my collection. So as we can see, this coin appears to be uh, quite polished, almost as if it has been polished sometime in its lifetime. Um, the lettering and the details are, are fairly clear as well, but, but have been worn down. Uh, if I were to grade this coin, 
I would give it a grade of uh, good to very good condition. Now let's take a look at the 1855 New Orleans Liberty Seated Half Dollar. The 1855 Liberty Seated Half Dollar has a size of 30.6 millimeters and a weight of 12.44 grams. The composition is 90% silver and 10% copper and the designer was also Christian Gobrecht. The 1855 New Orleans Liberty Seated Half Dollar has a mintage of 3,688,000 and this coin has an inflation value of $17.06 for the year 1855. The numismatic values on this coin range from $50 in good condition up to $1,500 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now let's take a closer look at the 1855 New Orleans Liberty Seated Half Dollar from my collection. This coin appears that it is in very good shape. Uh, it has a, a nice luster to it. The details are still very clear. We can see uh, the Liberty, um, the shield, everything is clear. The reading on the, on the edges are still very, quite visible and quite prominent. Um, the eagle is, is very clear on the back. The, uh, behind the eagle, the background behind the eagle is, is very clean. And uh, as we know, uh, while there is some slight, slight wear on the high spots, um, the majority of the details are quite clear and so therefore I think if I were to grade this coin I would grade it extremely fine condition. Next we will take a look at the 1856 Liberty Seated Quarter Dollar. The 1856 Liberty Seated Quarter Dollar has a size of 24.3 millimeters and a weight of 6.22 grams. The composition is 90% silver and 10% copper, and the designer was also Christian Gobrecht. The 1856 Liberty Seated Quarter Dollar has a mintage of 7264000 and this coin has an inflation value of $8.73 for the year 1856. The numismatic values on this coin range from $28 in good condition up to $650 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now let's take a closer look at the 1856 Liberty Seated Quarter Dollar from my collection. As we can see here, this coin uh, still has quite a bit of the, the details as we see on the front. As we look on the side, the reading is still quite uh, clear and detailed. And the back, um, the eagle, the, the shield, uh, the, the wings, is, everything is still uh, quite detailed. There is some slight staining behind the eagle. Uh, but overall, I think I would uh, grade this coin in very fine condition. Now we will take a look at the 1857 silver three cent piece, also known as the Trime. These coins are the smallest of all U.S. silver coins ever produced. The 1857 silver three cent piece has a size of only 14 millimeters and a weight of 0.75 grams. The composition is 90% silver and 10% copper, and the designer was James B. Longacre. The 1857 silver three cent piece has a mintage of only 1,042,000 and this coin has an inflation value of $1.02 for the year 1857. The numismatic values on this coin range from $45 in good condition up to $800 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now let's take a closer look at the 1857 silver three cent piece from my collection. As we can see as we look at this three cent piece, it does have quite a luster to it on the front. 
Uh, the words are still quite visible, the star, the lines around the star are, as well as the shield, the details. Now as we turn it around and look at the back, we can see that this, the same thing as the front. The details are all there, the stars are clear, um, everything appears to be there. However, some of the higher areas are worn down. Now, um, if I were to grade this coin, I would say it is probably in uh, uh, either about uncirculated condition to extremely fine condition. Next, we will take a look at the characteristics of two Flying Eagle scents. Each Flying Eagle scent has a size of 19 millimeters and a weight of 4.67 grams. Their composition is 88% copper and 12% nickel, and the designer was James B. Longacre. The 1857 Flying Eagle scent has a mintage of 17,450,000. And this coin has an inflation value of 34 cents for the year 1857. The numismatic values on this coin range from $25 in good condition up to $1,000 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now let's take a closer look at the 1857 Flying Eagle scent from my collection. So as we can see here with this Flying Eagle scent, it has a little bit of a, a luster. Um, it is slightly, uh, slightly corroded, as it is copper. Um, it appears that the uh, details are still there. They're still pretty clear. And I think if I were to grade this coin, I would grade it in fine condition. The 1858 Flying Eagle scent has a mintage of 24,600,000 and this coin has an inflation value of 36 cents for the year 1858. The numismatic values on this coin range from $25 in good condition up to $1,150 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now let's take a closer look at the 1858 Flying Eagle scent from my collection. So as we can see this coin um, does have uh, some of a luster. Um, it definitely uh, has some, some wear on the high spots. It appears all the details are still clear and they're still there. Um, I, 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 it looks to be it was like it was, it's in better shape than uh, the previous one, the 1857. If I were to grade this, I would grade it in uh, very fine condition. Next, we will take a look at the characteristics of two Indian head scents. Each Indian head scent has a size of 19 millimeters and a weight of 4.67 grams, which is the same size and weight as the Flying Eagle scent. Their composition is 88% copper and 12% nickel as well. And the designer was James B. Longacre. The 1859 Indian Head scent has a mintage of 36,400,000. And this coin has an inflation value of 36 cents for the year 1859. The numismatic values on this coin range from $15 in good condition up to $725 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a closer look at the 1859 Indian head scent from my collection. So as we can see with this coin, the details are still there. However, it is uh, fairly worn, both on the front and as we can see on the back. The one scent is, is uh, barely visible, but it is there. Uh, as we can see, it is made out of copper, and copper does wear down pretty easily as it is soft. But if I were to grade this coin, I would grade it as fine condition. The 1860 Indian Head Scent has a mintage of 20,566,000, and this coin has an inflation value of 36 cents for the year 1860. 
The numismatic values on this coin range from $10 in good condition up to $300 in brilliant uncirculated mint state condition. Now we will take a closer look at the 1860 Indian head scent from my collection. As we can see, this coin is in a little bit better shape than the previous 1859 scent. Um, the details are quite clear. It is not as worn down. Um, the uh, Both the front and the back look uh, like uh, the details are pretty fine. It appears that the uh, shield is, is pretty clear. The one cent there is pretty clear. Overall, I would grade this coin in very fine condition. Now we will look at some of the history and key events in the 1850s time period from 1851 to 1860. In 1851, the Treaty of Traverse de Sioux is signed by which the Sisseton and Wapiton Dakota tribes sold 21 million acres of land in Iowa, Minnesota, and South Dakota to the U.S. for a little over $1.6 million. The New York Daily Times, which was the original name for the New York Times, was founded September 18, 1851. The famous book, Moby Dick, was published by Herman Melville in the U.S. on November 14, 1851. A fire occurred at the Library of Congress on December 24, 1851, destroying about 35,000 books. Also in 1851, the first World's Fair in history was hosted. In 1852, the famed book Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe was published. The airship, or the blimp, was invented by Henry Gifford in France, and the Studebaker Brothers Wagon Company was founded. In 1853, Franklin Pierce became the 14th president and the Coinage Act of 1853 was passed by Congress, which lowered the silver content of some of the silver coin currency through reducing coin weight. The coins affected involved the half dollar, quarter dollar, dime, and half dime. Also, a three dollar gold piece was authorized. In 1853, Levi Strauss and Company is founded the Great Republic becomes the largest wooden clipper ship in the world, and potato chips were invented. Also, the Crimean, Crimean War began, which was a war between Russia and the alliance of England, France, Sardinia, and the Ottoman Empire. In 1854, the Kansas-Nebraska Act became law, which repealed the Missouri Compromise created two new territories and mandated popular sovereignty which allowed settlers of a territory to decide whether slavery would be allowed within a new state's borders. Also, in the same year, the Gadsden Purchase, known as the Treaty of La Messia, was a 29,670 square mile area of modern day southern Arizona and southwest New Mexico that the United States acquired from Mexico for $10 million. In 1854, the Republican Party, or GOP, was founded, and the famed song, Genie with the Light Brown Hair, is published. In 1855, Congress created the U.S. Camel Corps, which was an U.S. Army experiment using camels to carry materials as pack animals. However, the idea never took effect. The Panama Canal Railway opened, which was the first railway to cross from one ocean to another. In 1855, the Bleeding Kansas Border War began, which caused approximately 55 deaths and ultimately led up to the Civil War. Also in this year, the Bunsen burner was invented, which was soon used as a heat source in laboratories across the U.S. In 1856, 
Borax was discovered in California near Death Valley. The first rotary egg beater is invented and condensed milk is invented. Also, the great train wreck of 1856 occurred on July 17, 1856, by which two trains collided, killing between 59 and 67 people, leaving hundreds of others injured. Also, the same year, the Crimean War came to an end. In 1857, James Buchanan became the 15th President of the United States. A 7.9 earthquake hit Fort Tejon, California. Congress outlawed foreign currency. The U.S. issues the Flying Eagle since, and the first U.S. perforated stamps are made. Also, the Panic of 1857 ensued due to uncertainty because of the poor international economy and the expansive booming domestic economy. In 1858, the U.S. and Yankton Sioux tribe signed a treaty which allowed the U.S. to acquire 11 million acres in South Dakota while creating the 430,000 acre Yankton Sioux Indian Reservation. Also in 1858, the, the first use of fingerprinting for identification began when William James Herschel used it as a magistrate in colonial India. This same year, regular mail to the Pacific coast began. The pencil with attached eraser is patented, and the first rotary washing machine was patented. In 1859, Oregon joined the Union as a free state. Silver was discovered in Virginia City, Nevada at the Comstock Load, which led to the eventual mining of almost 7 million tons of pure silver. It is likely that many Morgan silver dollars were produced using this silver. Also in this year, the first American oil well is created, drilled by Edwin Drake in Pennsylvania, and minting of the Indian head scent begins. In 1860, the Pony Express, which was an American express mail service using horses to deliver mail from east to west coast, began. Also, the Crittenden Compromise was proposed to permanently codify slavery into the U.S. Constitution, but was, thankfully, unsuccessful. Also, in this year, South Carolina became the first state to secede from the Union and the song, I Wish I Was in Dixieland, was published by Daniel Emmett. For more videos, please like and subscribe. Also, I would like to give you the opportunity to try handmade luxury bar soap from Prairie Scent Company, my small business in California. If you are interested, please click the link in the description, and you will be led to Prairie Scent Company's website to shop. Thank you. Keep on collecting and have a great day.